Miroslav, thank you so much for joining me today and for visiting Biola University to talk about suffering in the good life, resilience, uh, um, the human response to really the universal impact of, of suffering and pain in our lives. Great to be back in Southern California. Yes, glad right to have you. Biola. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I wonder if, if we could start um, at the level of what is a good life? You've written on flourishing. And you said that um, there are competing visions of the good life. Um, everyone wants a good life. Everyone disagrees about what a good life is. I wonder if you'd articulate what you take the good life to be. Yeah, it's one of those terms that, uh, that has a life of its own. Okay. Uh, and it lives in kind of particular subcultures in a different way. Um, think of uh, an issue of architectural digest. Uh, entitled The Good Life, yeah, and right. then uh, subtitle was Fabulous Homes <laughs> from Around the World. <laughs> That's a kind of... Uh, lifestyle. Lifesty lifestyle, it's kind of opulence association yeah. With, yeah. The, with, with the good life. Um, that, uh, I tend to think in terms of uh, good life, uh, <coughs> or actually various conceptions of, of good life, to have three formal components. Hmm. Somehow, life is going well, for a person mm -hmm. or for a community, for the world, in fact. Um, I act in a way that's responsible. Yes. I lead yeah. my life mm -hmm. well, mm -hmm. and I feel rightly. Right. So circumstances or circumstantial component mm -hmm agential component, agency of a person, and kind of emotional component, and all three of them combined together go into what we think and experience as, uh, as the good life. Now, different traditions will emphasize one or the other, and these three shouldn't be understood as a three independent stool of a good life chair. <laughs> right. But rather they bleed into one another, Certainly. inform one another. Um, and uh, I, I think in the Christian tradition, they're expressed uh, with terms uh, like righteousness would be agential mm -hmm. side. Mm -hmm. uh, peace would be the circumstantial side uh -huh. and maybe pinnacle of emotional, um, uh, fulfillment would be joy in the Christian tradition. Uh, yes. And so if you have these three interpenetrating one another, you have something of sense of the good life. And then we can uh, explicate each one of them, what, what it takes. Yeah. Um, With those as standards, um, I mean, not to, not to burst the bubble too soon, I can think about, I mean, it's, it's easy to imagine life not going well. Mm. It's easy to imagine ourselves failing to act well in light of those circumstances. Mm -hmm. and, it's, yeah. and it's certainly um, familiar to know the, the pain of not feeling rightly, um, uh, right. to be disordered and chaotic in, yeah. in our emotional lives. So I wonder, um, let's overlay that, that understanding of the good life with, I mean, can, can a life full of suffering, existential crises and, and pain, can that be called a good life? Well, in, in certain ways, um, all of our lives uh, are caught in a kind of journey away into the goodness of our lives that we experience. We experience it always in a broken way, mm -hmm. in uh, a way that causes us to celebrate as well as in the way that causes us to, to mourn. Mm -hmm. And in a sense, in the Christian tradition, that is the eschatological vision, so that the life and the goodness of life it always is there uh, on a journey to this uh, uh, eschatological mm -hmm. fulfillment. Mm -hmm. And in that sense, uh, we, can, we won't have fully good life mm -hmm. <laughs> with experiences of uh, brokenness, but we can have a good life. And then one has to ask also, how, how are these various components in the Christian tradition uh, aligned? And you can sometimes be in a situation where just because you live a good life in its agential dimension, because you act rightly, yeah. you experience life not going <laughs> well and isn't good in yeah. circumstantial uh, dimension. Yes. So, so you've got not only all of them, Fisher going through mm -hmm. all of them, mm -hmm. but also 
sometimes situations where you have to sacrifice one over the other. And we have tended to, in a contemporary culture to uh, install circumstances as the most important dimension of, uh, of our lives. I think in the Christian tradition, without negating importance of circumstances, is the agency that is important. Indeed, some mm -hmm, of the suffering mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that is paradigmatic in the Bible, like suffering of Christ, yeah. comes as a result of trying to make circumstances as well as agency, okay. as well as an emotions of others uh, to express the good life. Yeah, you, you, I mean, you've said this about just this topic. My entire world is not defined by the circumstances in which I find myself. I transcend those circumstances in relationship to God, and therefore I'm enabled also to be an agent that will transform and change those circumstances if the opportunity arises. Mm. So now there's this component of transformation and change, sure. and that's a really important component of what it means to be an agent. That's right, that's right. I, and I think, I think there's a kind of agency toward the self Mm -hmm. And there's an agency toward the circumstances okay. as well. And some of the agency toward the self is, in a strange way, also already agency toward the circumstances. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, again, not to diminish the need to transform the objective features of the circumstances in which we find ourselves, but also a great deal of our enjoyment of the world um, and uh, comfort with circumstances is tied to our expectations yes. <laughs> and tied to the way in which we read what we are experiencing because we never have just the thing there, right? Mm. Uh, I am, circumstances are such that I'm always already in relation to whatever the objective realities yeah. are. And we're interpreting my, them all the time. That's right. So my agency in relating is a fundamental dimension of the circumstances themselves, right? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. uh, attention to then the way in which I relate to circumstances, to myself in, in those circumstances, I think is also fundamental to the good life. Yeah. Uh, so, so you can't, uh, you can put it uh, um, this way, say if you take an, uh, uh, t take an illustration from a particular domain of our lives, say economic domain. You cannot sell, solve economic problem by economic means alone. <laughs> right. You cannot solve economic problems by con however much production and just mm. uh, distribution you undertake. Mm. You still haven't resolved that, that uh, issue. And the reason is because economic problem isn't out there. It's in my relationship to yeah. the circumstances. Yeah, they're symptomatic and expressive of some kind of I internal disorder. Yeah. Uh, perhaps internal just to the self, but internal also to relations that's to that, each other. That's right, exactly. And because the, the two, again, uh, reinforce each other, how I relate to others, and mm -hmm. how they relate to me. Um, uh, of course, it will be a mistake then simply to say, well, the only thing you need to do change your attitude. <laughs> then you, 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 you kind of, you, you'd knock, uh, to go back to the beginning of our conversation, you'll knock off one of the, stu one of sure. the legs of the good life stool and you topple over. Yeah. 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 So I think each one of them has its own integrity, but they're uh, bleeding into one. Mm, indeed.